Hi there, this is Gary Short with Gibraltar Software. Welcome to this video on getting started with WinForms and Desktop Loop. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps you need to take to get logging information out of your application and into Loop. So let's get started. We're going to start from the position where you already have an existing WinForms application and you want to connect it to Loop. A really great way to do this is by using the wizard right here on the start page. The wizard lives over here on the right. Click the link and the wizard will open. The first page of the wizard allows us to point Loop at our application. There are a number of files you can select at this point, but we'll go ahead and select the project file. For information on the other file types that you could select at this point, consult the documentation at the URL on screen now. For the rest of the wizard pages, we'll just accept the defaults, remembering to input our email address when asked. Don't worry too much about these pages right now, we'll cover them in greater detail in future videos. Back in Visual Studio, we can see that the wizard has registered the agent for us. Now in a team environment, it will be up to you to manage these dependencies, either via NuGet or by having everyone in your team install Desktop Loop. You can also see that the wizard has added a file link to the packager so that it will be deployed with your application. We'll look closer at the packager in future videos. Here in the app.config file, you can see the changes that the wizard has made to enable the agent and packager to work with your application. You can add this code manually, of course, and you can also edit it at any time. Although the agent will start the first time you make a call to either the log object or to debug tracer console, best practice is to explicitly start and end the session using the appropriate methods. Here you can see their use in the program.cs file. Having set up the agent and started the session, it's time to log some information. Here in the code behind file for the form, we're going to write some information to loop. Firstly, in the load form event, we'll log the creation of some critical startup entities. Note the use of the dot delimited category name. We'll look at the effect of this later in the video. Next we'll add some items to our shopping basket and log those actions. Then we'll process our shopping basket, logging either the information that we've processed it, or a warning if the total value in the basket is over our allowed budget. Lastly, we'll throw a couple of errors. The first will be handled and sent to the error dialog, which we'll see later, and the second will be unhandled. With the logging code placed in our application, it's time to start it up and see what effect that's had. The first thing to notice is that the session doesn't get sent to loop until it has ended, so we can't get access to the enhanced metric loop provides until that time. However, whilst the application is running, information is stored here in the Live Sessions folder, and we can view that with the Live Viewer. Here with our application side by side with the Live Viewer, we can see the events arrive in real time as we press the buttons. Notice that although we are still using Live Viewer here, and don't have access to the enhanced metrics that we will have access to when the session ends, Loop still provides us with a wealth of information regarding the category of the event, as well as the class and method in which it was logged. This alone can be very helpful when debugging. It's also worth mentioning that you are free to distribute the live viewer with your application to help with logging and debugging. The viewer can then be popped up using a configurable keystroke combination which defaults to Control alt f 5 the last thing we are going to look at before we end the session is what happens when we encounter an error. You will recall that we threw two errors, the first handled and the second unhandled. You will also recall that instead of just logging the error, we instructed our application to record the error, i.e. send it to the error dialog. The unhandled exception is sent there automatically. By clicking on the more button, we can drop down information on our two exceptions, as well as configure how we wish exceptions to be dealt with in the future. Now it's time to close our application and return to Loop. With the session closed, the packager sends the information to Loop and we can find it in the folder with the same name as our application. Drilling into the session, we have access to the enhanced metrics. As we may have a lot of events in our session, Loop offers us a search facility, whereby it will highlight, in green, all the events matching the search criteria. To cancel the highlighting, simply search on an empty term. I mentioned previously that by using a dot delimited string in the caption parameter of our log call, Loop would categorize our events in a meaningful way. Here we can see that categorization in action. Let's filter the events in the view to show only the events in our categories. Much like the live viewer, this view of the session gives us information on the category, class and method where the event was logged, as well as information on any exception that was passed at logging time. As with the live viewer, we also get a view into the source code where the event was logged. Lastly, I want to take a look at the many, many metrics that Loop records automatically with no effort on your part, giving you great insight into how your application is used and what resources it is consuming. To finish, we'll grab a couple of the memory metrics and graph them, just so you can see how simple it is. More information on the data managed by Loop can be found at the URL on screen now.
Well that's it for this video on getting started with Loop Desktop and WinForms applications. I do hope you'll join me for the next video in this series. Until then, goodbye.